you now on this Friday morning, February 5th, 2010. This time next week, we will be in Vancouver for the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. So these folks are getting their waves in on the plaza while they can, unless they want to come with us to Vancouver. Of course, this weekend's big sporting event is the Super Bowl yeah, on Sunday. Sunday. That's right, Sunday night. Colts versus the Saints. A hundred million people expected to tune in in this country. You know, about half those people don't care who wins the game. They just want to see the commercials. Yes. <laughs> a lot of people tune in for those commercials. So coming up in this half hour, we're going to have a sneak peek at some of the ones that you will be talking about on Monday morning. That's the thing I really noticed during the Super Bowl. It's hard to take a bathroom break. No, you, know, you, you don't want to. That's right. Exactly. Also ahead in this half hour, never before seen photographs of the legendary Marilyn Monroe that were taken eight months before she died. We're going to show you more and also talk to the photographer who took them in a moment. Also coming up this morning, take a look at these beautiful... Up next, a sneak peek at this year's Super Bowl commercials. But first, this is today on NBC. We ran out of time. Back now at 843 with a preview of this year's Super Bowl. Not the matchup between the Colts and the Saints, but the commercials. Here with a sneak peek is Matt Miller, president and CEO of the Association of Independent Commercial Producers. Hey, Matt, welcome back. Good hey, to see you. You too. It's that time of year again. Two it and is. a half to three million dollars. That's what advertisers are paying for 30 seconds in the Super Bowl. Does history tell us they get, they're getting enough bang for their bucks? Well, in many ways they are. And in many ways they're getting new bang for their bucks. I mean, it, it really has been a, a vehicle that not only show the health of your company, but tell Wall Street you're vibrant, but also speak your brand in a different way, in a fun way, and, and, and really do connect. But, you know, prices have held. Prices truly have held. They've been, you know, they, they thought it would dip a little bit this year, but it was strong and it came right back. That's a lot of jack. Let's get to some of the commercials you think people will be talking about. Um, this one is for Snickers, and this is kind of a humorous one. Let's take a look, okay? Betty White. It's always great to take someone and place them outside their normal environment. And it's great. And, and the Super Bowl does that well, creatively, year in and year out. And, you know, anytime, you know, the Super Bowl is about a good laugh. You're watching it in a big crowd. You want a good laugh that's going to be memorable. You put Betty White with some football players, some young guys playing football, and there's a, a little surprise in there with Abe Bogota. I know someone you know well. Exactly. So you put them in there playing football with young guys, you're going to It's a you're good score. juxtaposition. Dockers and Dove, both with funny commercials. Uh, Dockers, first time in the Super Bowl, I believe. We're just going to play a little. We can't play this whole thing, but this is weird. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of fun. There's a great sound check here, and the idea, you know, in both Dockers and, and Dove, it's a little bit about growing up, and, you know, it's a little about that uh, uh, hangover mentality from the films and all that. Men coming of age, it's time to grow up and wear pants. Right, and, and it's a little bit Monty Python esque. And, and what's interesting here is it's all a sound check, and it's kind of a funny song. And um, they, they uh, co branded this thing with, with Sam so you can actually download the song and you can do all these things online. Right, and there's a good thing that comes at the end of that. Uh, Dove, they did real well with the Real Women's Real Woman campaign, and, and now they're kind of taking that and moving it over to men. They are, and they're doing it in a humorous way. I mean, they, they, they've thrown out some statistics like, you know, over the years, the, the number of man grooming products have grown 25%. So this is another way of saying men grow up, you know, it's put on pants here and, and start grooming yourself. By the way, for car enthusiasts, we're not going to show any commercials here, but there are five foreign car companies that have purchased ads in the Super Bowl only one American car company. That's pretty telling. That is pretty telling. It's telling of, of what's going on. And I actually think some of the, the ways that the foreign car companies are connecting are in very humorous ways and very interesting ways. Um, VW especially is doing some really interesting things. Career Builder and Budweiser have both done, these, both done these things where they've allowed viewers prior to the game to in some ways determine what they'll see during the game. Yeah. Is that a good strategy? Well, it's huge. I think right now it, it, it's part of the strategy. You know, la last year, I think 90 percent of the advertisers played their their spots either pr prior to or afterwards on some sort of other platform and in fact while you have a hundred million viewers you also have about a hundred million hits within the, right. the days Change after the position. Super Bowl to give it another life and and those two actually allowed the consumers to help pick the ads that were going to be in the Super Bowl engage them beforehand we often talk about the go daddy commercials for good reason to get Danica Patrick let's take a look and we'll talk about it on the other side 
Every time I search for a domain name at GoDaddy.com, a girl talks to me. A girl, watch. SmokinghotDreamGirl.com. Oh! That's Danica Patrick. So, you little maniacs want another domain name? Yes, please. <laughs> How about SmokinghotDance.com? See what happens next at GoDaddy.com. I don't know what to say hey, about that, so let's just that? run it again. Flash dance meets weird science, a little nostalgia just out there, and it's going to make you go look at it again. They always have the strategy of putting some things out that they know will be rejected yeah. to get the buzz going. They've had so, one band, right? Yeah, yeah they, exactly. Every year they have one band. Coca-Cola, big year for Coca-Cola. Why? Well, Pepsi hasn't been in now. This is the first time in 23 years Pepsi's not there. They vacated it. They left the door open for Coke to own it. So... <laughs> Here you have it. Uh, they, um, they've been battling it out for a couple of years, um, both of them in the game, and now Coke's there with three spots this year, and um, and they're going to own it. And and controversy, I think, if there is some, you can talk about this Focus on Families uh, organization's ad. It's a pro-life ad. It features Tim Tebow, the college football quarterback and star, and that's gotten a lot of talk. And, and I think, you know, if the idea is to get a message in front of a lot of eyeballs, they've decided to do it in a big way. It is. And, you know, it is a, it's a very gutsy move. I think the interesting thing that, that's out there politically is that in the past, CBS specifically and the other networks have rejected advocacy ads. They've rejected ads uh, that are more liberal in their stances. And this year they accepted this on a conservative side, so the liberals are up in right. arm. And they actually did reject a, uh, a gay dating site ad. So you have, you know, a little political undercurrent here going. But we're talking about it, and again, that's probably half the battle that's for these the organizations. Right. Matt Miller, Matt, as always, thanks very much. Great to be here, Matt. All right, and which ones do you like better, the commercials or the game? You can weigh in at our website, todayshow.com.